Hello everyone and welcome back to Killer Shrew Fans 12 Days of Reviews and today we're going on Safari. That's right, for my first in-depth look at a new for 2022 Safari figure, we'll be talking about their Cryolophosaurus. This was the last reveal for the year, following the standard line releases of the Patagotitan and Albertosaurus, as well as the Dinodana Zool, Nanotyrannus, and Stigimoloch. So, the big question is, did they save the best for last? Or is this Arctic Predator leaving me a little cold? Let's find out! It's Killer Shrew Fans 12 Days of Reviews, and this is Safari LTD's 2022 Cryolophosaurus. So going in for a closer look at this figure, this Cryolophosaurus sports a relatively shallow and narrow head with an apparent notch between the premaxilla and maxilla. The sculpt does have some extra oral tissue, but you can see the white teeth poking out of the open jaw there, which also reveals a purple interior. Of course, the real talking point of Cryolophosaurus is the eye-catching crest, which has been well captured here with a ruffled texture and vibrant red coloration that runs down the nasal. Beneath that, the eyes are picked out in a striking blue coloration. Moving on from the head, the neck features some buckling lines of skin forming with the subtle turn of the head, while the opposite side features more prominent sections of pulling skin stretching up from the torso with the curve of the neck. Once you hit the midsection, you'll note the prominent form of the shoulder blade, and then you have got some nice lines of skin hanging down around the gut there. It's a bit more baggy on the left side, where the forward thigh is pushing it into the flank, while it's pulled ever so slightly tighter on the opposite side, where the leg is braced away from the torso. The tail is a good length, and you have got more skin folds stretching or buckling at the base with the movement of the limbs. I will say, I like the gracile downward curve to it, and it's nice to see that that doesn't come at the cost of this figure being a tripod. That tail does not touch the ground. The arms are nice and long and end in three clawed hands, and it looks like there's even a fourth vestigial digit included in the sculpt. The legs are powerful yet gracile, with a meaty thigh feeding down into a drumstick-style calf above the ankles and feet. The toe claws are a dark gray, and this is one Doug Watson sculpt that does feature subtle plate scaling running up the backs of the toes. Moving along the underside, not a ton to talk about down here, but interestingly enough, the stamp on the belly has been misspelled as cryolophosaurs. That's a whoopsie. And then you do have a cloaca vent just past the base of the tail. All of this has then been covered in a coarse sandpaper-esque scale texture. The pose is quite active, but believable. The legs are sculpted in a wide gait while the arms are held slightly up and out at the ready, while the animal turns slightly over its left shoulder. From certain angles, it almost looks like an ambling posture, but others give it an almost ambush look to it, as if the arms are spreading outward to hook onto a prey item while the cryo bears down. There's a lot of ways to interpret it, and like I said, it's nice that it isn't a tripod pose as some thought it might turn out to be. I suppose in an emergency it can lean back onto its tail for additional support, and I will say that mine did show up with a warped toe, so that extra support might be needed down the line. For now though, I'll just appreciate it for what it is. And that's the sculpt of this thing. Overall, I quite like it, although I think it could have looked nice with some feather covering, even if it was just a cape of downy feathers along the back. I also would have liked to see more speculative features like waddles or snoods on the face. Basically what I'm asking for is a scaled down take on Blue Rhino Studios Cryo, but then again, 
Such speculative design features don't strike me as really being Safari style. No, they seem to want to stick as close to the tried and true science as possible. And that's just fine when the end result is this pleasing on its own. As far as the paint job goes, this may very well be my favorite Safari paint job in some time. The striking blue gradient and striping along the dorsal region looks great with the golden tones of the midsection. And that red crest, man, that makes for a strong accent color. I love this paint job because it feels both grounded and vibrant at the same time. Too often it seems Safari have been opting for one or the other with their color scheme, so this really is a breath of fresh air. As far as the size of the figure goes, it measures about 8 inches or 20 centimeters along the curve of the neck and tail, and stands in at right around 3 inches or 7.6 centimeters off the ground. With size estimates ranging between 21 and 26 feet in length, that would put this figure at 132 to 139 scale, with a 135 scale representing a 23 foot animal. So certainly a fitting size for the rest of your 135 scale figures. For size comparisons, I'll start by bringing in some other Cryolophosaurus figures. First up we have Papo's Take, and you can see he's all dressed up in his Christmassy best. I know that that Cryo was controversial for its pose, but it remains one of my personal favorites from Papo. Oh, if only they could return to this level of sculpt and paint. Next up we have the Terra by Batat Cryolophosaurus, another nice figure after all of these years. Interestingly enough, I noticed that this figure features a dual crest on the head, a feature also present on Papo's offering, though much less pronounced. I'm not sure what the grounds are for this split crest appearance, but it appears Safari have opted to keep it as one continuous shape. The same can be said on the old Carnegie offering seen here. In all honesty, with the exception of the awkward tripodal pose, I do still think I prefer the aesthetics of the Carnegie figure. The sculpt and paint just feel a lot more refined and clean. Of course, you take that figure away and the new offering still oozes that contemporary Doug Watson charm that I've come to appreciate from Safari over the years, so that's not really a criticism against the new figure at all, just my personal preference creeping in. And as a final dinosaur comparison, I'll go ahead and bring in another new for 2022 Safari figure. This is of course their Albertosaurus, my former favorite of the year until this cryo was revealed. And of course, we gotta bring in our good friend 135 scale Shrek, oh, since this cryo there. does come close enough to that scale. Alright, back to your swamp. Bye bye. And that was the new for 2022 Safari LTD Cryolophosaurus, and yeah, I think this is the winner of the year for me. It delivers exactly what you would want from Safari. A lovely Doug Watson sculpt paired with an eye-catching color scheme, all at a very manageable scale. I definitely dig it, and I don't doubt that you will too. And as always, I want to know what you guys think of this figure. Have you picked it up yet? Are you planning to? What is your favorite 2022 Safari LTD dinosaur figure and why? Drop a comment down below and as always, thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode of Killer Shrew Fans 12 Days of Reviews. I hope you all enjoyed it and I hope to see you again tomorrow for another review. And this one, this one's going to be a little longer. <laughs>